is the most comfortable map for basically every team. Um, there's no one who really has too strong of an advantage going into that map, while some of the others uh, are just a little bit different uh, layout and can benefit teams that are more aggressive, for example, or more defensive. So uh, King's Row seems to be kind of across the board determined as the most balanced. Lijiang Tower is going to get banned out now. Not going to be seeing that. Nepal is still out there as a possible King of the Hill uh, location. Team Liquid now on the choice. We do have our three maps for this best of three series. It's going to be King's Row, Nambani, and Nepal. Now it's just a matter of what order are we going to be playing them in. All right, we did have uh, Lee Jung in our first game, um, in our first match of the day, but it looks like, ooh, Nepal is going to be that third map. So, King's Row or Numbani, and of course, it's going to be King's Row. Yep, King's Row once again, get us started. Um, this is kind of just a, an equalizer. If, if you kind of gauge your progress on this first map, you can determine maybe how well you'll do on other payload maps that are similar. Hollywood and Nambani are both hybrid uh, capture into payload as well. So uh, those are often picked as well for series. I'm surprised that we actually haven't seen Hollywood. We will be seeing Nambani at least as game two of this uh, match here between Team Liquid and Northern Gaming Red. Uh, Please let us know in the chat who you think is going to take this series. It's going to be a much closer one, in my mind, than Envious versus basically anybody. So nothing against one shot. Again, Envious is just you know, looking so dominant right now against the entire field that uh, it would be pretty difficult to pick anyone else over them. But Liquid and NG Red, very, very evenly matched, very similarly ranked on the Ghost of Gamers ranking, which is pretty much the closest thing we have to a competitive ranking uh, in existence. It is you know, still fallible. It's not 100%. Um, you know, the word of God as 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 it is who is a better Overwatch team. So uh, definitely opportunity here for both NG Red and Liquid to try and turn some heads. Liquid has been going through some roster changes recently. You've got Id, Dehang, Minstrel, Dummy, Mezer, and AZK as the squad right now for this Beyond the Summit Cup. And over on NG Red, we've got Naptime, Wolf, Bread Expert, Bird, Chance, and Mangachu. Wolf and Bird uh, teaming up to be some incredibly potent offensive players, and Mangachu very often playing that Pharah, which has come into the meta so strongly since the McCree and Widow nerfs, and one hero limit is just a great choice all around for aerial control. Yeah, and immediately we do see that Mangachu is on that Pharah. It's going to be nap time to pocket him there. Wolf will be playing this Widowmaker, as we saw in the last few games. Dot um, was doing fantastic for one shot, opening up uh, so many opportunities for them. We'll see if Wolf can do the same. Um, for NG Red here. Now on the side of the defense though, it's going to be it on that Farah Dehang, of course, on the Mercy. Minstrel will be playing um, the Winston. We got Dummy on Roadhog. I love I love that Roadhog has come into the meta. Um, triple Tank setup coming out also for Team Liquid. Mezrar going to be on that Reinhardt. AZK is going to finish off that roster with that Soldier 76. Yeah, only one support on defense again for King's Row A. This is something I find very surprising as Lucio and Mercy tag team so well together. They're not opting to use the Symmetra. Symmetra was kind of a staple here for a long time in closed beta with only four minutes though now in this competitive mode rather than five in the quick play rule set. Uh, she's actually fallen out of favor a little bit. And I think it's again, just the damage output that they're looking for when they go that one support. And uh, right now we've got Naptime and Mangachu kind of combining here as the Pharah Mercy combo for NG Red. The rest of the team is looping around to the right side. Bird is an extraordinarily good hit scan player. Soldier is kind of his forte. So definitely keep an eye out for Thanks. Bird in that kill feed. Mezer just sitting on the point right now, making sure no one kind of gets past him. And it looks like with all this flanking going on, NG Red still hasn't actually made an attack yet. It did uh, up in the skies now, taking some rocket shots into the upstairs apartment here. Minstrel getting in there to deal a little bit of damage as well. The team is split so far apart, I can't imagine how they're going to try and attack this point now. Yeah, we do see AZK finding that first pick onto that Mercy. So now it's a 5v6, and that's the Mercy. That's the heals down. Red Expert is there, but the Lucio heals not on par with that Mercy heal. We do have the high ground control on the side of the attacking side. That's very odd for me to say, um, as we do see the defense actually falling back towards the statue. But they are caught out right now. It and Minstrel, though, catching out these stragglers. Uh, people trying to funnel in and... Right now, the attack is just getting picked apart. 
Yeah, nothing has uh, actually even happened in the first minute and a half as far as I'm concerned. Finally, it goes down. Chance jumps onto the point. Uh, there is a res coming out on the side of the defense to bring uh, at least one or two members back up. Dummy gassing up there as Roadhog to get back to full health. It falls. That fair is going to be a big loss for them. There's a soldier ult coming out. Minstrel using his primal rage. Mangachu with that barrage gets a couple of kills but does fall during it. And Chance falling on the point right now is going to actually put a stop to this push as Bread Expert is the last person alive for NG Red. He's going to fall. Wolf needs to return to wherever he came from quickly. And he does teleport to safety as Reaper. So so he did hop off of that Widowmaker, switched onto Reaper for some more sustained damage, was not getting the picks that he needed during that, uh, you know, circle maneuver that they were trying out at first. Chance on the point now, ticking back up. Minstrel leaps in. Mezzer trying to get some shots onto Chance. Chance does not have a shield up, so he's going to get slowly uh, worn down. Sound Barrier picks him back up. Mezzer and Dummy actually both falling. The tanks on the side of the defense. Minstrel is that third tank also falling. Dahang and It are the only ones still alive, but they're actually nowhere near the point. They are going to cap this. With, with a speed of about two and a half minutes. Yeah, it was all down to it finding that, or uh, excuse me, Mangachu finding that pick onto the hang early on in that engagement, making it a 5v6, getting rid of that mercy. And from there, they were able to just pick them apart. We already see right now, Northern Gaming Red are going to start crossing this. Only one person on the payload, two now. They could be pushing this forward a lot faster. Yeah, so just uh, for, again, those of you who are watching for the first time, not too familiar with competitive Overwatch, you can see the payload being pushed by two members at the top of your screen right now. That's what that two and the two arrows mean. Uh, there's actually a maximum of three people that can push the payload to its fastest speed. Four, five, and six, it do not matter. They're not any faster than three people pushing. So three push is something that you'll hear pretty frequently in competitive. It is the fastest that you can actually move the payload. Distance matters, time matters. So uh, every time you send an offensive character up to the back line of the defense, you're basically removing a player from the payload that could be pushing it further. But here we go, another engagement. Earth Shattered opens the things up here. Wolf with that death loss of getting several kills. Actually, only one kill on the AZDK. In with the Barrage scoring the majority of kills, but the Res brings them all back into play. NG Red still pushing that payload. There's attack visor from the side of the offense. No targets in sight. They are going to back off. You can see Mercy and Fair off to the right side for the defense, waiting for their opportunity. The payload is going to start to be contested now by Mezzer and crew. Liquid all here in full force. Taking out chance is going to be really good for Liquid as Naptime does not have enough uh, ultimate built up for another resurrection. So I think Liquid is going to re-grab the payload here and be in a sweet spot here to try and defend as NG Red comes back into play. Yeah, I was going to say just before they engaged that they were playing a little bit tentative on the side of Team Liquid, but that he were able to push forward and uh, get that fight. Right now, two minutes, 50 seconds left on the clock for Northern Gaming Red as they do push up. And right now, Team Liquid posturing a little bit more forward than they were beforehand. Right now... Offense just trying to gather themselves. No ults available except for now Chance's Earth Shatter. It's going to be extremely important as they move around to the side. They do re-grab the payload very quickly. Defense just backing off, giving them a little bit of a cushion as they talk about what they're going to do. Call out where the offensive characters are. Uh, Mezzer actually going to run in. Chance drops the Earth Shatter at a terrible time, unfortunately, as the Reinhardt Shield was easily up in time. Mangachu dropping the Barrage, gets a couple of kills, forces that Mercy Res out of Dehang. Still players from both teams all over the place right now. we got flankers, we got tanks back battling each other. Chance actually gets the pin on Mezzer. That's a great pickup for the offense. They're going to get a lot of space out of that as no one can really contest anymore. It's going to be AZK as Soldier trying to get in there with attack visor active. Gets the kill on Mangachu, but cannot contest the payload for very long. I hear Dummy actually getting a nice kill there onto Mangachu as McCree uh, off of that third tank. He's going to fall on the payload, and it looks like NG Red still has enough members alive. They should be able to just one at a time eliminate Liquid, and they do. There is that second checkpoint. Now we're in the final S-curve King's Road. Yeah, unfortunately for Team Liquid there, there were just a lot of positional errors. Minstrel almost getting caught out on that loose seal. He was very sp uh, spread out from this team, wasn't able to get the heal that he needed to. And now it looks like, yeah, right now, uh, Northern Gaming Red pushing up and Team Liquid are just trying to regroup their forces, but it doesn't seem like the comms are quite there yet for them. Yeah, so far, just nothing really going Liquid's way. They won that one engagement and then immediately lost it. Sound barriers going down on both sides. Gives offense a great little uh, room to push here. Mangachu is kind of close by, but cannot contest. Dummy actually coming in with the Genji now, scooping a couple of kills. But that is going to be Bird with the Tac Visor active, able to take him out. Defensive res brings all of Liquid back into play, and they are going to control.
control the payload once more. I'm watching the offense now to see if any switches happen. It looks like they are going to stick with what they got. Wolf has Death Blossom available. Chance has Earth Shatter. That could be a very potent combo for them on this next attack. Defense only has Mezer, but it looks like Id now getting his ultimate and AZK soon will have that attack visor. So could be anyone's battle here. Yeah, they're gonna go ahead and speed boost in. And there we go. We see the Earth Shadow coming out. It's only gonna land on Bird as it comes in from the flank, along with Merzar to get the kills. But Naptime is still alive. He gets the uh, offensive res off. And now, Northern Gaming Red played, uh, turning it against Team Liquid now in the back line. They're pushing the payload in. We do see the Dragon Blade coming out. Dummy, though, finds the kill onto Chance, but it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to pick up much else off of that as he gets cleaned up by Megashu, fighting that body shot. And now they're just picking them apart. And it looks like there's not uh, gonna be any way for them to contest. It tries to come in, tries to knock them off, but Wolf on the payload is going to be able to clean them up, and there we go. That's going to be Northern Gaming Red finishing off this map. Yep, they're going to able. Uh, sorry, they're going to be able to actually set a time here on King's Row. Uh, again, going into the match, we were saying Team Liquid and NG Red, um, very very close teams compared to what we saw in the first match. So Liquid definitely has the opportunity to try and beat that time. Looks like 6.59 is going to be the time to beat. And that's actually a pretty average time for King's Row. So uh, if you take every point at the last second, generally it's going to be 9 or 10 minutes. Um, sometimes if you push super duper fast, you'll get 4, 4.5 minutes. So 7 is a nice uh, time set just to be able to say you completed the map. But that is definitely beatable by Liquid if they can um, take point A swiftly. Uh, instead of in the first two and a half minutes, let's say they take it in the first minute, they will definitely have the opportunity to beat that time. So a lot of this is going to hinge on point A, in my opinion. Yeah, Northern Gaming Red could definitely have set a better time there. I think it all just amounts to that weird first push onto the first point where they had the three uh, members in the back line in the high ground. Um, there was a lot of time delayed there. Team Liquid were able to hold onto that first point for quite some time before they were... Uh, eventually had to relinquish it right now we do see on the attacking side it's going to be uh mesrar a uh, mesrar on that reinhardt azk is going to try his hand at that widowmaker dummy's going to be playing that roadhog to hang on the mercy id on the reaper and then minstrel of course rounding out that roster with that lucio yep curious to see azk on the widowmaker we saw dot have some success with it against envious so certainly possible to get a pick or two early on. Wolf did not have that uh, great success with Widow and ended up switching on to Reaper and it ended up being the key they needed to unlock A. So uh, I think Northern Gaming's t interesting tactic was basically built around Wolf, trying to get him into interesting positions, distracting the de defense long enough for Widow to get picks and he still couldn't do it. AZK leaping up onto that same perch that Wolf did previously, just taking mass shots right now at to that hallway. You can see both supports uh, in the back line for NG Red starting to take some damage, but Mezzer actually the first to go down that offensive Reinhardt uh, falls to Mangachu on the Roadhog. Roadhog again coming into play here on defense. Yeah, Roadhog really coming into favor, especially on the uh, defensive side here. You know, he can get those crucial picks as he does get that hook onto Dummy, brings him in right now. It's going to be a 4v3 on the point as Team Liquid are trying to contest. But right now, Bread Expert is there to stop the clock from ticking up for them. Wolf is just taking free shots at Mezzer. He does actually fall to that Reaper uh, gunfire there as Bird also loops in for some damage. It looks like the offense still has not switched off of that Widowmaker. They're allowing AZK some time to try and deal with this. He's got uh, one minute lead off the clock already toward that seven minute time that NG Red set. So they're happy to just sit in the back, wait for the offense to engage with them rather than allowing AZK to have those free sight lines. Bread Expert probably wants to get out of there. There he does. There's the die, die, die. Uh, Death Blossom coming in from id or id and getting a couple of kills nap time and chance both down means liquid very likely to be able to take this point mangachu gets pulled out of his ultimate uh, good hook there from dummy and the res is going to make sure that liquid gets this point a in about a minute and a half minute 45 uh, to get us started here it is a little bit faster than ng red though yeah it with that speed boosted in uh death blossom was able to get that Crucial pick onto nap time, who did have the resurrection in his pocket, but unfortunately going down so early in that fight meant that Team Liquid were able to finally cap this point. And like you said, they were able to cap it a little bit faster than Northern Gaming Red. At this point, uh, Northern Gaming Red, though, posturing a lot more aggressively than Team Liquid did on their side, on their defensive side of the street stage here. 
Yeah, I think uh, they're actually pushing up pretty aggressively here. They have a few ultimates available, so they're going to try and stop them in this underpass. Again, this is another great spot where you have very limited entrances into the King's Row Street. So you want to play each of these choke points a little bit differently. Chance with his shield up now is going to have the speed boost to bring everyone into play. Bird and Wolf running to that front line do find the kill on ID very quickly, and that is going to slow down Liquid enough that they're actually going to back off. AZK has swapped off of Widowmaker onto Soldier now, which makes a lot more sense for pushing these payloads. Biotic Field is great on the payload itself. Uh, Soldier with his sprint allows him to get into position a lot faster than Widowmaker, and it's just a lot less sight lines to work with here. So uh, defense looking very strong. Still a lot of ultimates to go. ID is stuck. What does that mean? I'm going to go take a look. He is in a spawn. He just cannot move. Moving the payload. So it's up to our admins to what to do to that. We're just casters, so we're going to keep casting. Uh, we'll let them work it out, but ID, yeah, has not moved in uh, about 20, 30 seconds right now since his death in King's Row Road. I saw him move a little bit. He's changing characters, trying it out. There he does switch to Farah, and it looks like he is going to be able to move again. So I'm not sure what happened there. Never seen that bug, honestly, a single time before. All right, so now we do have the full six on six as Team Liquid are pushing up. We do see that the whole hog does come out with both Earth Shadows actually whipping on both teams. And right now, Northern Gaming Red have to fall back. We do see that right now Wolf might be able to get the flank onto Team Liquid here. He is in the back as they continue to push forward. Right, Chance's shield is actually almost broken. This is actually very risky. I was surprised he pushed in all the way immediately just to die. Megachu does have the whole hog ult going behind him, but Chance definitely ran up a little bit too far too fast. Uh, looks like offense actually finally has that opening that they were looking for. Dehang does have res for the offense. Naptime's sitting on it here for the defense, but they're going to let Chance respawn and run his way back instead of picking up the uh, using that res on just him. Offense, uh, defense actually split a little bit. Naptime, Megachu, and who is a wolf all in uh, different areas right now. The payload itself is essentially empty, but Liquid still needs to gather everyone together and figure out how they're going to try and break through this. It's Barrage most likely going to come into play here. Yeah, right now teams reposturing themselves up and Northern Gaming Red pushing forward and oh, that hook by Mangachu coming in takes out Mesra and that's the strength of Roadhog right there, finding that immediate pick, turning this uh, um, this team fight one-sided, but we do see the Rocket Barrage coming out. It's not going to actually find anything there, but we do have the offensive reds coming out from the hang, but immediately they're getting cleaned up. They were, you know, caught out on the left side there. Now, Northern Gaming Red pushing back Team Liquid. This is very strange. The players are just saying that they're getting stuck. And I've literally cast hundreds of these matches now, and I've never seen that uh, bug come into play before. So I'm really curious what is going on here with that. But both teams continuing to play it out. Bird uh, getting the kill on AZK there. Good stuff for the defense of NG Red. Time is starting to bleed off for Liquid now. They actually only have a minute and a half to try and reach this next checkpoint, let alone try to actually complete the map. We do see um, it on the back there with that tracer. Might be able to pick off one of the supports here. It is trying to go after nap time, but in the front, it's going to be Bird finding the kill onto Dummy. It is traded away as Mesrar takes down Chance, but it in the back line here isn't able to get the kills quite yet as the team has come down on him. And now he does get the Pulse Bomb off, but that's going to be on the tank. That's going to be on Megachu, who is able to just heal right through that. We do have the flank coming out from Wolf. The Die 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 comes out. He gets one kill onto Minstrel right now, and it looks like... Northern Gaming Red are slowly cleaning this up. AZK right in front of Mangachu. Mangachu Ouch. is going to finish him off, and there we go. Looks like Northern Gaming Red will push them back. Really nice string of ultimates there from Liquid, but it was not enough as... Uh, who was that that got the last laugh? It was Mangachu with the Roadhog blasting AZK in the face with that whole hog ultimate. Great Earth Shatter there from Chance keeps his players alive. The counter Earth Shatter barely does anything, so Mezer cannot feel too happy about that. Mezer is going to fall, dummies down, AZK has no tanks, he's going to fall as well. And NG Red doing a great job on defense here in the streets, cleans up Liquid. Yeah, 26 seconds left. It looks like they have only one last push on the side of Team Liquid here, and it might be Northern Gaming Red taking the first map in this series. Uh, and yeah. actually, GG's are getting called. Yeah, it looks like uh, per stopwatch uh, mode rules. Team Liquid just aren't going to be able to finish this off. So, that's Northern Gaming Red taking the first map here on King's Row. Okay, so it uh, seems to be that the players are just uh, complaining about server. Our lobby host can actually just hit L and return us to the lobby, so we'll see 
what uh, what's actually going to happen here. NG Red already taking game number one here on King's Row against Liquid. Now we are returned back to the lobby. So uh, game number two, I'm just going to look at that map draft again. I think it is going to be on Nambani if, uh, if they follow the rule set the same way that I'm understanding it. Nambani and then Nepal would be game number three. Yeah, so we are switching off to Nambani. It's another hybrid payload map, which is capture into payload. Players are discussing right now what they want to do about the server or the lobby or what's going on, players getting stuck and whatnot. So we may just take a minute here and get that worked out before launching into game number two. Yeah, that was definitely something I've never seen before. Um, he was on Reaper, might have, I don't know, um, shadow stepped into a weird area, but um, we'll see what the issue was with that. There might be server issues, but I haven't seen that in any of my custom games either. Right. They're trying to determine where the lobby host is, but it's actually West Coast, and they're asking for West Coast, I believe. Or were they asking for East Coast? All right, so game number two, it looks like at least Liquid is ready to go. Server issues aside, this honestly is the first time I've seen it, so I got to agree with Blaze that unless it's just so detrimental that the game is an obvious win or loss, um, 30 seconds or more of inactivity, it would be would be terrible. But actually, after a minute or so has taken place of the gameplay, you really can't redo. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Hopefully everything will smooth itself out. But NG Red also saying that they're ready to go should be launching into game number two here soon. NG Red already up one to zero. Let me know in the chat if you think Liquid can battle back or if you think NG Red is going to do the same thing here on Nabani that they did on King's Row and move on in this event. Yeah, right now, NG Red looking very crisp in their decision making. They're converging and focusing their targets really well. So when you see these team fights, you'll see three members on one member of the opposing side really quickly and just focusing them down. Um, right now, it is going to be NG Red on the attack here on Numbani. Yep, Numbani is, uh, you know, just a fictional city somewhere in Africa. It's a. Uh... The lore is basically Omnix and humans living together, and the attacking team is trying to deliver a, an artifact from the Omnic War called oh, Doomfist's yeah. Gauntlet. The payload itself is actually with Doomfist's Gauntlet on it, uh, and they're delivering it down the streets of Numbani to a museum. That's like all they're fighting about, and I guess the defense is just so mad that they don't want them to deliver this uh, relic to the museum that they're going to kill everyone and try and stop them. But you know, that's just that's just lore in an FPS. That's how it goes sometimes. We've got you know space gorillas and all that stuff popping around as well, so nothing too surprising. Defense is going to be setting up with a Torbjorn this time around and a two support defense with Mercy and Lucio. Only one, oh, two tanks, Mezer and Id with the Winston and Roadhog. So likely going to be playing just the point. You can see all these ledges facing down to the point is really perfect for crossfire. Uh, AZK is going to be crossfiring with that Torb turret so that if they jump on the Torb turret, AZK gets the kills. If they jump on AZK, ideally Torb is going to get those kills. Yeah, right now on the offense, we do see Wolf playing that Genji, and in this map in particular, Genji does have a number of routes for him to take to try and get the flank. So we'll have to look to him to see if he can actually uh, find the crucial picks that NG Red need as they push in. They are pushing into the left-hand side here, and it looks like they're going to collide with Team Liquid very soon. And they're going to get spotted out by that Torbjorn turn, but it's going to be Bird with the Helix Rocket that picks that off. And now Dummy actually is going to fall to his death as Mangachi was able to knock him off. So immediately, um, right now, NG Red have the advantage as they do push forward. It's, it's another weird strategy, basically. Picking routes that are uncommon, not going straight up the road, not going through the downstairs uh, inside route. It gets a hook, actually misses the hook. Wow, I thought he actually would have easily had that with uh, all those players up there, but the chance shield, I think, actually denied him. Dehang hopping around in no man's land. Chance gets a free, few free shots on him, but Dehang does quickly find AZK and gets out of there. NG Red trying to take this point. It's just being contested by one member of Liquid at a time. Mezer in there now trying to zap down Wolf on Genji. Uh, Wolf not normally uh, on Genji too often. He's typically a hit scan player or Reaper, McCree sort, but uh, Genji working out for him so far and Mingachu getting a double kill there. Actually, 
rounds it out with a triple on dummy, allows them to take point A. I think they're certainly going to get this. Liquid not going to be able to contest, and a very swift, uh, under 90 seconds capture of point A, looking good for Northern Gaming Red. Yeah, that was great execution coming out from Northern Gaming Red. You know, they just, uh, looped around to the left-hand side there too long, and were just able to catch out that Torbjorn. That was honestly a strange position for the Torbjorn to be, especially that close to a ledge. You know that players are going to be on that fair. They're going to be looking for that knockoff, and that's what happened. So far, defense is setting up just down the road, giving them a lot of cushion, a lot of space to push so they don't lose anyone un unneeded. Uh, Dummy does throw in the uh, Pulse Bomb, lands it on Mengachu, who is actually swapped onto Bastion for this phase of Numbani. This is basically the streets phase. Again, similar to King's Row, this payload's going to push around an S-curve and try to reach a checkpoint, and then there will be a final uh, stretch for them to try and get down basically along straightaway that can be very difficult to crack. Uh, so this is actually usually a spot where NG Red is going to be able to break out of here. Dummy doing a good job on Tracer just distracting as they come out of spawn. Here comes the Sound Barrier and the Dragon Blade out for Wolf. Wolf looking for those squishy targets in the back. Finds uh, Dummy Minstrel and hang all fall very quickly in down now as well. AZK falls and NG Red literally just bulldoze through here. Mezzer down as well. That's going to be a lot of free space here for NG Red to push. Probably get this checkpoint, no problem. Yeah, NG Red, like I said, are doing such a good job. Like, they're crisp with their executions. When they get that kill, they start smelling blood. They go in on them. As we do see the proxy coming out, Bird is going to fall back as Chance is the frontliner. And that's going to be the, uh, the payload making it to the first checkpoint. Now they're still continuing to push forward. We do have it on that Reaper trying to deal with uh, the double tank coming out um, on the side of NG Red right now. Moving forward through this underpass, this can be the final toughest choke point to break. Usually, once you can get through this section, your your routes open up a lot more, and you get a couple more flanking options. But the uh, underpass itself can be really tough. Uh, you get the sound barrier coming out for the side of the defense, and that actually looks like it saved them as Chance charged in. Uh, they are not going to have that Reinhardt shield. You can see that Mikachu popping his whole Hog ultimate now to try and counter, get a couple of kills. But of course, that Reinhardt shield from Mezer is going to be enough to keep Liquid healthy, and NG Red is going to have to. To basically fully reform after losing everybody. So tit for tat, NG Red rolls through Liquid, Liquid rolls right back through NG Red. Five and a half minutes left now to try and take this final stretch. Again, just a quick S-curve into a long straightaway. Once this underpass is cleared, things change pretty drastically, but for now, NG Red uh, probably going to have one or two flankers go to the high ground. Actually, everybody's going to the Everyone's high ground right going. now. And Reaper is up there waiting for him. He's actually going to book it out of there when he realizes what's happening. Yeah, it looks like they were just trying to find the pick. They knew that the Reaper was there, and they didn't want to, you know, fall uh, prey to a flank. So they just cleared that out first, but it's still up there, and he's ready to drop down onto them. He does have the Death Boss, and here it comes out. Unfortunately, isn't able to find any kills, as he does get hooked immediately by Mankachu. But it's Mezzar that finds two quick kills. The Resurrection is going to come out on the side of the offense. Snap time does survive that one, and we have the breakdown coming out from that Lucio. And they continue to push forward, pushing the defense back. Yeah, with that attack visor active, pretty much uh, no one can stand up to that and they are easily going to clear the underpass. Now they're in the straightaway, and then you just have to watch the spawns. There's really only the left spawn and the right spawn that they have to worry about. Chance swatting away uh, anyone who tries to come here. Wraithwalk is used to contest from ID. He's going to get popped down as well. Mezer getting caught by the Earth Shatter. I was going to say he's going to be their best chance to try and hang on here, but NG Red just gets all the kills they need. Wolf ending it with a Death Blossom there on Minstrel, and Mezer gets all the kills they need. Time is going to be set here for Liquid to try and beat. Switching sides. Now we are going to go ahead and switch sides. Team Liquid will have their chance at attacking here. But Numbani, I feel, from what I've seen with Team Liquid, they do definitely have like difficulty pushing that last S spend. NG Red, though, just was able to bulldoze through them, able to uh, connect their ultis together, just um, dominantly taking the fights. Pretty quick. Pretty quick time set. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but <laughs> they they still had like four minutes left on their yeah. Clock, they had so. they met very little resistance at A, only 90 seconds to take A. The uh, streets phase went very very quickly. Sorry, what was that time? 4.11. Oh, yeah, definitely on the, the speedier side. And this is uh, similar to King's Row, where like 9 or 10 minutes is essentially the longest you're going to see. Uh, three and a half, four minutes is 
some of the faster times that you're going to see. So Liquid, very difficult, actually, proposition for them. Uh, they might not even be able to take point A in the first four minutes, 11 seconds. So it uh, can be pretty tough for them. I, I think the key to pretty much everything, as you said, was the Torbjorn turret placement, being in such an awkward place, and then just immediately getting knocked off the ledge, uh, contributing essentially nothing to point A really hurt them. Whereas you could set up a Torb or Bastion down on the low ground, on the opposite ledge, and have no risk of being knocked off the side. I think it was just a little bit of a flub for Liquid that could end up costing them um, this map, which in turn will cost them the series. So Liquid really needs to make it happen here. Dummy is going to be particularly interesting here as the doors open. Genji is just so good on this Dumbani attack. I want to see what he can do. Yeah, we do also have AZK on that Widowmaker. So, you know, coming from the FPS background, we'll see if he's able to land those crucial shots, find those picks um, as they do attack in. Now, this is going to be very difficult because they are um, playing it very safe on the side of Northern Gaming Red, breaking the line of sight against Team Liquid right now as they are pushing in from two different fronts. The high ground actually is looking pretty good so far. Lucio's the only one at risk of being knocked off, and of course he can wall right back up. Look at that wolf actually getting the kill on Dummy so fast. I told you I wanted to see how good he could do. He just immediately gets popped from across the screen. So wolf on Genji duty, doing a great job there. It looks like defense is missing two players, Bird and Bread Expert, both down. But Liquid doesn't have everybody kind of together. They're very piecemeal, coming out of spawn still to hang up in the front line as Mercy is something you never really want to have happen. ID is actually in the back line inside the gift shop area actually i'm not even sure what he's doing he actually went all the way outside and floated around the back edge just to be able to come back in through the gift shop so that was very strange uh just self-preservation there but now liquid is a little bit split up wolf and Mezer, or sorry dummy and Mezer are going to leap in here trying to engage bread expert and chance are surrounded but wolf comes in as mccree getting a lot of damage in id does go down to bird on that soldier one of the best counters to Vera currently uh there's a dead eye coming out i'm not sure where he is it looks like Mezer and Minstrel scoop, skipping a couple kills. AZK uncontested as Widowmaker facing down on the point gives Liquid a great chance of being able to take this point. Yeah, right now things are looking pretty grim for Northern Gaming Red as the Primal Rage comes out and he's going to go ahead and knock them all off the point and this should be the first point for Team Liquid who, you know, did meet some resistance initially but that id flank actually worked out. Yeah, somehow he managed, he actually floated all the way around the edge of the building, knew that there was a full health pack on the other side if he could actually reach the ledge, and he did. Is Farah, you can fly, so it's not too challenging, but it was just a, kind of strange. It did end up working out. Um, Bird picked ID pretty early in that fight, but everything else kind of combined pretty well for Liquid. I think AZK actually being unchallenged on Widow was a really big deal as he was sinking a lot of damage in, not really getting too many kills, but a huge 100 damage chunks being taken out of the tanks definitely made it difference. Chance leaping in now as Reinhardt with his shield up allows NG Red to just take over the payload. I don't see any liquid members around the back end except for ID still. Uh, that Farah just being very interesting at, at flanking today. Yeah, he was so close. He was looking for like that five-man barrage um, as they were trying to control the high ground. Unfortunately, wasn't able to find it um, in the back line. Dummy was trying to get on the supports, but Bird was easily able to clean that up with that 76. But right now, Team Liquid pushing up the payload as Northern Gaming Red had the high ground. Chance gets knocked off. Now he's pushing forward to contest. We do have AZK, did switch off to that Reaper, but Dummy in the back line finds the kill onto Mangachu. So now it's a 5v6 as the Barrage finally comes out. It finds a kill, gets the second one before he finally falls. AZK is going to go ahead and get that kill onto Chance. Pushing forward now, and it looks like Team Liquid should be able to get this. Now we do have a call inside chat, though. We're going to wait on admins to tell us what's going on, though. Shouldn't be 411 remaining. It was 411 total, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, okay, so, so either way, see. players should. Yeah, they 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 need to keep track of their times as well. Like that's that's definitely a part of the game. You always want to put in full effort until uh, it's GG. So here we go. Sound barriers on both sides. Chance actually dropping. The Earth Shatter to a perfect moment there gets a charge pin onto uh, on the enemy Reinhardt actually, but it looks like NG Red actually fully in control of the payload until that res came in. Now Dummy going crazy, getting the kills on Wolf and Bird. That's a large amount of DPS gone now. AZK Death Blossom to no one. 
uh, doesn't actually get anything except the follow-up kill on Mangachu. Mazur drops the Earth Shatter here for Liquid, try to continue moving forward. They may actually be able to beat this time. It's up to NG Red Bird is way out of position. No way he's going to be able to contest. He's trying desperately as Soldier. He's not even trying to contest, actually ran back to the spawn. And it's just going to roll right in. That was a super weird ending to that game. All right, yeah, that was definitely an odd ending to the game, but Team Liquid were able to finish off that map. Sudden. I don't know who won. I'm not sure either. <laughs> admins, admins can help us out. Um, I don't know who set the faster time. NG Red, 4 minutes, 11 seconds. Of course, uh, we are going to cut past the sudden death as we're not using that rule set. We're using the competitive custom game for ease of tournament, but not the actual sudden death rules. Lick it. Liquid finished in about 30 seconds quicker than NG Red, so Liquid is actually going to take game number two, and that means everything's going to be settled on Nepal where time doesn't matter. All right, so yeah, that means we're tied up, and yeah, we're finally going to a third map. I say finally, this is the second match of the day, but this is going to be the first time that we actually see a King of the Hill map, and it's going to be in Nepal. Now, we are playing this, I believe, uh, best of five? This is just a best of three, so... Oh, uh, no, um, on Nepal. Oh, um, I believe we're doing BO5 King of the Hills. Yes, competitive kind of uh, rule set. All right. So, Team Liquid, we're able to fight back, even though Northern Gaming Red uh, were able to take King's Row on them. So we're going to go ahead and move on to Nepal to see who will move on in the winner's bracket. All right, Nepal King of the Hill map. This is our first one of the day, so might as well take a little bit of time explaining it. Essentially, there are three King of the Hill maps in Overwatch. You've got Nepal, Lijiang Tower, and Ilios. They're all made up of three different sort of settings uh, where there's a big giant square in the middle that both teams run at and clash over. So there will be no offense or defense, no pushing or pulling or stopping or rolling or anything like that. It literally is just the point in the center of the map everyone's going to be fighting over. You can see the percentages at the top. You start at 0% on both sides and work your way up to 100%. You can clear the point and take it over for your team side uh, if the other enemy team is already in control. But all the time that's spent fighting, if as long as one person Person who's on the team that controls the point is still standing on the point uh during the fighting, your percentage will continue to tick up. So uh, you have to flip the point completely in order to stop percentage being gained from one side or the other. So you'll see as we get started here, uh, the order of these three different points can actually be random. So um, this one is called Village. There's also Shrine and Sanctum on Nepal. And we'll see both of those, of course, as we uh, are doing a best of five. So we have to see all three at least. We don't know which ones will be doubled up on in around four or five. So uh, the first team to secure three points essentially will be the winner. Doors are open now. You can see everybody on the high ground here for NG Red. They are employing the Bastion strategy. This is essentially just protect the Bastion. You've got Mercy, Reinhardt, and Zarya all lending their support toward the Bastion to try and get those early kills or surprise kills. And it looks like Liquid already on the point, though, with Reaper trying to take that early cap. Yeah, Dummy is going to go ahead and try to get into the back line here, but he does have the Zarya to help him out. The barrier is going to keep him alive. It's actually going to be Dehane that gets the first kill onto that Zarya as Chance tries to contest at the point right now, but he's caught out by three members as uh, Team Liquid try to push in, try to contest this. So far, Bastion not really getting a ton of damage in. It looks kind of spread out. There's Minstrel actually falling. That's a good kill for Bastion. Uh, you can hear him emoting there. That was kind of weird as he takes some damage. Dummy coming in as Genji. Uh, Pretty good counter to Bastion if he can get that deflect timing perfect. Otherwise, uh, the mobility just allows him to get around Bastion a lot easier than some other characters. But NG Red finally swooping into the point, using that Bastion ultimate and the speed boost together. Chance actually getting a couple of the killing blows there on Dehang and Mezer. It's going to slow down Liquid quite a bit. Liquid already up to about 25%, but now as they are cleared out, NG Red is going to flip the point over to their side. Yeah, AZK getting hit with that fire strike by Chance. So right now it's going to stall. Um, NG Red as they try to take back this point, but right now if we take a look at the Bastion he set up on that high ground, he's got the Reinhardt shield. This is going to be a very difficult defensive break on the side of NG Red. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. Actually, aerial superiority can come into play here, though they do not have a Farah in play to try and take some free long-range rockets. They don't have a Widow or a Hanzo. Uh, they are going to go with the Graviton Surge, catching the entire team. But again, this is a Protect the Bastion comp. 
they're easily going to be able to protect him during the Graviton surge with the Reinhardt Shield, Zarya Bubbles, Sound Barrier even came out, and NG Red still in control of the point, but you can see the blue progress bar actually almost about to flip it for Liquid, so they have to stay on the point here and continue that percentage ticking up while ID kind of just takes free shots as Reaper. He is the last one standing for Liquid. He's going to fall. Mezzer backing off now as Zarya actually gets killed. You can see that Ragdoll flying across the map, and here we go. It looks like NG Red going to maintain their control over the point. Now at 52%, things are starting to get a little bit scary for Liquid. They have one, maybe two more solid attempts to try and flip that point back. My ultimate is ready. Yeah, but they're set up again. NG Red with that bash and already at 63%. Right now, I don't think there's an answer. Dummy can try to get into the back line. He's posturing for it, but Wolf is there to contest against him. Dummy's got to be careful as he's about to get flanked, and they are going to go ahead and speed boost in. Right now, Mankachu, though, is going to be in tank form. Is he going to be able to find his first kill? He gets the kill onto Dummy. That was the man that was supposed to try and deal with the Bastion, but no, he's getting cleaned up. It is going to fall too. DK is trying to contest along with Mezrar on that Zarya. We do have actually uh, Dehang in the back with that Mercy, but doesn't have the res. And unfortunately, it looks like NG Red are going to be able to clean that up. Yeah, Liquid tried their best, uh, made a couple of swaps throughout that match as uh, they got rid of Genji, hopped onto Tracer instead, but nothing really came together. I don't even think Bastion was really the key there. I think Wolf and Bird um, just did a lot together as Genji and Zarya, surprisingly. Zarya just giving Wolf that shield uh, whenever the enemy team would come running in. So uh, Bastion, of course, is something that Liquid had to pay attention to constantly. It's always in the back of their mind. Watch out for the Bastion. Don't get caught out. But Honestly, Mangachu didn't do too too much. I think uh, the Bastion ults actually definitely came into play, but otherwise, uh, just not super dominant there. Uh, Liquid had an opportunity to try and flip that back, but they didn't actually go with any super long-range offense characters. Farah, Hanzo, Widow, all are pretty adept at making Bastion move at least, if not killing him from long range, and uh, they just did not opt for that. They went for AZK on uh, Tracer, trying to get around to the backside of him after Genji didn't work out, but... Uh, now the doors are open here on Sanctum. Obviously, you'll notice a huge pit around this point. Um, it can be come into play quite often. Roadhog can hook people into the pit who don't have a way to jump back out or fly back out. Uh, Lucio, very, very common here. You can see him on both teams, uh, able to boop people into the pit with his right click that knocks people back. So lots of uh, shenanigans can take place here. Both players, both teams just posturing right now. Yeah, the point is going to unlock it. That's Red Expert taking it for his team so far. But he's going to fall back. He's the Lucio. He can't be caught out of position here. Minstrel is trying to take him out. But Chance is on that. Zarya is pushing forward. They're going to have to back off. And that's going to be uh, NG Red, actually. Still trying to contest. Are swapping it back. But Minstrel still on this point is going to contest. Mesmer trying to stuck out. Um is going to get cleaned up by Wolf. He does trade away, but he's going to be Mangachu on that Junkrat that pick up two kills, and that might be NG Red taking the first point. Yeah, NG Red firmly in control now. They're going to already push up to that spawn just to disallow them from actually coming in during the uh, capture. Now they're going to back way off and actually use their range to their advantage. They've got a uh, bird on that soldier. Mangachu on Junkrat actually spamming bombs across. That gap is pretty interesting. Junkrat, not a character that I see too often here. Yeah, we do have the Riptire coming out, but he's going to try and wait this out. The teams are going to go ahead and back off. Team Liquid don't want to get caught out, and yeah, Riptire is not going to hit anyone. It's very difficult without like a good distraction to hit that Riptire on anyone, as we do see Mangachu getting that first kill onto AZK, and now Team Liquid already a man down. I, yeah, I'm actually just very surprised Ming and Chu is getting these kills, but it makes sense a little bit with these tight chokes. Uh, there's really only a couple of corners that Team Liquid can use to get around here, left side and right side. There is actually a flanking around sorry, flanking route all the way around the back that Mangachu should be aware of, but really, I don't think Liquid's going to be using it just because then they'd be taking on that front line 5v6, and that can be a risky proposition. 51% now already captured for NG Red. Keep in mind, they're up one round to zero in this King of the Hill, but it is a best of five uh, for this map, so still definitely going to be seeing a third point either way. Liquid cannot be feeling good about their chances moving in so far, though. You have the Graviton Surge coming out, and that's going to be three members caught out, but the Lucy ulti is going to keep them alive for now as Chance gets that kill onto Mesrar. Now they're pushing them all the way back to their spawn as Wolf comes in, kills it. Riptire trying to find the value on three. Are they going to spawn? No, he lands it. That's a three-man Riptire for Mangachu.
that's basically a round win because he picked off three members that are going to take forever to respawn. There's already an 85% that's going to continue to tick up during this next engagement. So, of course, Liquid is going to pop all their ultimates. Here we go. ID getting in position very quickly, but you don't want to be the front line as of Farah. He almost died there. Very scary stuff. Reaper's actually waiting around the corner. Already used his Death Blossom, but uh, charging up toward another one. There's Bird with his Tag Visor. That's going to basically seal the deal, and we do hit up to 100%. NG Red 2-0 to zero. so far on Nepal. This could be the final round and the final map of this series if Liquid can't get it together. Zero. Two. doing such a good job controlling the lanes for his team on that junk rat. Um, it looked like, unfortunately, on the side of Team Liquid, they just weren't able to find an ad support and they started running in, kind of panicking at the end there as we saw Winston jumping in by himself, um, getting picked off really easily. And at this point, Team Liquid might be losing their composure against NG Red. Here's one round for them to try and battle back. They have to win three rounds in a row if they want to continue on in this event in the winner's bracket. There is a you know double limb loser's bracket available for Liquid if they do happen to fall, but NG Red has to be feeling good. They just need to maintain control, not let up, and it looks like they're not going for any Bastion craziness this time around. You can see him pop out on this point from time to time, but it looks like uh, Tracer is actually going to be favored on both sides rather than Genji. Uh, ledge control is actually very important here as that full heal on the ledge is actually the only one anywhere close by, and it can be very difficult to uh, try and get control of that ledge with a all these range damage characters like Bird, just a great Soldier 76, for example, ID over on the other side, trying to focus him down. I can see him constantly looking for him as uh, the biggest threat to Farah, but NG Red again, looking pretty solid. Chance did fall. ID found that kill on to Zarya. Mangachu actually finding a kill on Dummy is really good for NG Red to try and hang on. You can see the Tracers just dueling constantly. AZK and Wolf battling it out in the back. AZK finds a kill on Bird and Bread Expert goes down. Liquid taking control for the first time here on uh, Sanctum, sorry, on the Shrine level of Nepal. Yeah, so the last 200% um, on the first uh, first two maps actually went over to NG Red. So this is the first light um, that Team Liquid have seen uh, attacking in, but right now NG Red starting to mount their offense, trying to take back this point. It's going to be Wolf going in with that Tracer. It is trying to find a kill, but Graviton Surge comes out on the side of Team Liquid, and they're going to clean up two quick kills. And that's going to be Chance and Bird going down. The res does come out, though. Nap time is going to be able to uh, retreat from there. Right now in the back, Mangachu with that Death Blossom is only able to get that one kill onto Dummy. Right now, things are going back and forth as we do have the res coming out on the side of Team Liquid. Yeah, Liquid back in full force. They are missing Dummy on Winston. He needs to try and scramble back here. He has that leap, of course, will allow him to get back into play. Chance is way out of position. Bird also surrounded. Bird's going to actually book it out of there, but AZK looks like he's going to hunt him down on Tracer. Liquid been in pretty complete control on this point. They have to feel good about being able to battle back some. Chance is coming in now does have Graviton Surge available. Here comes the Sound Barrier. I do expect to see a Graviton Surge as soon as there's two or three members clumped up. And uh, right now they are slowly taking the point. Chance actually falls to a stray rocket. ID getting a couple of kills there in quick succession for Liquid. Gonna help them save this point. There's a, a res coming in from Liquid. Brings back Dummy. And it looks like uh, Minstrel also coming back on Lucio. So Liquid still hanging on. And NG Red suddenly for the first time it's, has to scratch their heads and say, what do we do here? Wolf has a dead eye. Naptime has res. Chance still hanging on to that Graviton Surge, Bird out of position somewhere, getting focused down quickly. Chance with him now. They're all going to come out of this high ground. Chance looking for that Graviton Surge. He has to stay alive long enough to do it, though. He's only at half health. Now lower, lower than that. There's a Graviton Surge. I don't know where it went. Ew, it's like weird. nothing happening. Yeah, right now they are on to the point, trying to contest that 99% for Team Liquid right now as Wolf is pushing in with that McCree. But he gets jumped on by Dummy. He gets taken out quickly. Or actually, he's still alive. Um, but in the back line, he's gonna take out Dummy himself, and now it looks like NG Red actually contesting might be able to take it back, and they were almost on the brink of defeat here on the third point, but they're gonna be able to swing this back in their favor. I'm actually very confused. Where did that Graviton Surge go? I didn't even see um, it. So it shot through the shrine, almost all the way back to the oh. stairs near the ledge. Gotcha. And that's where it ended up landing. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> that was a pretty brutal misfire. Um, either way, Liquid definitely uh, still happy sitting on 99% because it really only takes one wipe for them to actually flip the point and get that last one percentage point. So as long as they don't lose too many people, as they are starting to do, to hang and dummy both fall despite that very, uh, you know, protected area that they're in. Very 
cover filled uh, room that they're in. Dehang still managed to fall. Now he is back with the rest of the team. They have five ults available. NG Red is starting to get back up into the 50% range. It's going to get harder and harder to retake as they go, but I expect a lot of fireworks coming out here. We have a three-man Graviton Surge coming out. AZK in, in, finding two kills. That's going to be Wolf and Nap Time down now. So, in this 4v3, they don't have a res of their own, but we do have a um, counter Graviton Surge coming out. It looks like NG Red are going to be able to clean this up. AZK and that Zarya still on the point to try and contest. Red Expert just going to go ahead and uh, skate around here as the teams are trying to... Uh, contest this, but there we go. That's going to be Mesrar getting cleaned up. It has come in in the back line. That's going to be AZK. That gets cleaned up by Mangachu. And NG Red are going to be able to successfully defend for now as the res does come out. So that's dummy. And Mesrar on the point as Mangachu finds the kill onto it. Bert activating the attack visor from behind, actually getting a lot of kills in conjunction with Mangachu being healed up by nap time. Liquid cannot get that last percent. Good job, NG Red, contesting still up to 60% now. Liquid really, really needs to flip this point to stay alive in the winner's bracket and not lose to NG Red here. Uh, Northern Gaming doing a great job. Wolf actually on a Tracer staying alive constantly. Bird, his positioning has been pretty great for retaking these points. ID now off of Farah onto Soldier himself after dying maybe a few too many times to that combination of Bird and uh, Wolf. But here we go. Death Blossom coming in for Mangachu. Doesn't actually get any kills, but you can see Liquid losing a lot of health, being forced back. Lose, they lose AZK, and that is actually really rough with only about 10% left to Hank trying to keep everyone healed up. He's got his res available, but they're in such a an awkward spot. He doesn't want to tell them to go die. He wants to use it at the perfect spot, of course, but now Mezzer going down and Dehank goes down. That's pretty much it, guys. There's no heals left for this uh, push opportunity. Minstrel is on Lucio, but uh, there's a six members, now five members of NG Red. There's a, a sound barrier for Red to try and keep control. Minstrel, the last person on the point as it ticks down. Divas are coming into play now. Mezzer here, but loses his suit before even getting to the point. Graviton Surge holds him in place, and that is going to be GG's Liquid Falls to Northern Gaming red northern gaming red takes it two to one and moves on in the winner's bracket yeah like you said at the beginning of this match that it's a toss-up between these two teams about who's going to take it but northern gaming red going two one against team liquid here um in the beyond the summit overwatch cup and this is the uh three-man retire that comes in watch them just struggling trying to get back to their spawn but they're not going to make it mangachu did a fantastic job on that junk rat and that helped them get this uh 3-0 win here on